Hello, this is Hui. Welcome to watch my video C++ Programming on Linux. In this short video, we are going to discuss program using signals on Linux environment. The signals specification can be easily found from online from Linux programmers manual. So signal is one of important sector and widely used for C, C++ programming on Linux, Unix environment, especially for real-time applications. So Signal is an event generated by Unix and the Linux system. In response to the sum of special condition, upon receipt of signals, a process may take certain actions. It's event handling structure programming. So signal can be generated, sent, and captured in the same process. Signal can be generated, sent, and captured for each threading in multi-threading program. Signal can also be sent from one process to another process. Signal is an integer, but it has a short name. So this all defined by the signal.h. So like a defined signal HUP is one, signal int is two, and uh, signal user one is 10, signal user two is 12. Here on the internet, you can find the document specify what the meaning of this signal. For example, signal HUP, if a process is being run from terminal and this terminal suddenly goes away, then process will receive a signal called hang up. It's short term of hang up. So this signal int is value is two. This is a process was interrupted. This happen when you press control C on your keyboard. Signal 10 is signal user one. This is left for program to do whatever they want. Also, other signal, signal 12, is signal user 2, is left for program to do whatever you want. So if you want to program your customization program using signal, in order not touch system signal, like a signal int, signal hang up, we can also overwrite these signals, but if you don't want to touch, you can use signal user 1 and signal user 2 for your customization program. Here on the Linux, we create one program called MySignal, which is demonstrate how a signal generate, received, captured by same process. And another program called pthreadsignal.cpp, which is demonstrate how a signal can be sent to each threading in the multi-threading program. And uh, two program, one called send signals, and another called receive signals. These two demonstrate how the signal can be sent from one process to another process. So my first example called my signal.cpp. This is a program which is using signal to generate and capture by same process. To be able to capture signal, we have to register a signal. We create a function called a signal handlers. So we're using signal function to register our signal handler to be able to capture the signals. We just write four signals, signal hang up, signal interrupt, signal user one, and signal user two. All these four signals will be handled by the signal handlers. Signal one and signal two is the system signals. One is called hang up, and as we interrupt, which when we press control C, and uh, when we did this registration, means we, in this process, we overwrite the signal hang up and the signal interrupt process. So this is a customized signal, can do our own programs. First, we just uh, get our process ID using get PID, and then we just print my process ID, which is ID, and then we make a loop when the I is not zero, and uh, we Memory set option, which is the character of 10. We try to get the signal, which is number 1, 2, 10, 12, from the console terminal. And we convert this to the i, which is the integer, as we say, signal is the integer. This is a short name, but it's integer of signal. 
and then the function using to generate rise the signal which called the rise. So what's the rise doing? So rise is uh, send a signal to the caller. So who is calling? We send the signal to itself. The rise function send a signal to calling process or thread. So we're using rise to send signal to our same process. So our signal handling, which is just print out the rise signal, which is signal number, which we received from the signal we captured. So when then we print the short name, what signal short name we captured, and we just print out received. This is our simple program able to capture our signal from same process. So we using capture, we using signal to register signal use our function signal handler to capture signals. We use the rise to rise the signal, generate and send the signal to same process. So our second example is called pthreadsignal.cpp. This program is a multi-threading program. We use one of a preview video using the pthread program, which is uh, we use the pthread signal we get the input, how many threads we are going to generate it. So we got a number of threads, we use it from command line, argument 1, to get the image. Then we create the P thread T array, which is the code thread, number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's the number of threads. And we register our signal handler, signal user 1, signal user 2, which is number 10 and number 2. And this is a function which capture signal called signal handlers. Here is our signal handler function, which we capture the signal number. We just uh, update a signal signal which is defined as a CD atomic. The type is the signal atomic T. Signal atomic T is the integer type, as we say the signal is the integer, which can be accessed as an atomic entity, even in the presence of asynchronous interrupted made by signals. So this is a special type which uses handle signal in the atomic type. So atomic T type, which is signal, each integer type. So we update. We use the STD atomic, which is in one of previous video. We have a demonstrate in order to not corrupt multi-threading to access a resource at the same time. So our thread function parameter is a thread ID, which is called thread ID, is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what we do, we just first print out thread ID, this ID is waiting signals. And then we use the pulse. The pulse function is for waiting signals to this thread. After this thread receive signal, and then we just print out this thread, which is this thread ID, which signal, which is signal number, and the signal short name, which received. This is just print out what signal we received from this thread. First, we make a loop, TID from zero to number of thread. We just print out main program, create thread, and the ID is 0, 1, 2, 3, because that's a loop. And we use a pthread create to create a thread. And this thread function, first waiting for signals, and then we print out which signal we received. And we make a sleep 3 seconds, we just waiting all the thread created, and here there, waiting the signals. Then we make a loop from the 0 to number of thread, we send signals to this thread. To send in the signal to thread, the function called the pthread queue. So this pthread queue, first parameter is a thread which is we created from the pthread create. Second parameter is which signal we send to this thread. So we send two type signals. For the TID is even, like zero or two, we send a signal user one, which is number 10. For the TID is uh, E old, which we send a signal user 2, value is 12. After sending the signals, we just use the P thread join to join thread. And finish all the thread, we just print out program finish. 
So we are going to test here is to send signal to the each thread and each thread after received signal and print out which number of signal we received. Our next example is called send signals. Usage is send signal. We need the process ID in command line argument because we're going to send signal to this process. So first we get a process ID convert to the integer and my signal the initial is one. So we make a loop. Each loop we try to input a signal number 1, 2, 10, 12, which we use in our receiving program. And then we convert this to integer, which is my signals, the integer from input, we convert to the my signal. Then we use the function, which is called a Q, this Q function, to send signal to a process. So this Q function takes two parameters. First parameter is PID, process ID, which we got from our command line argument. And the second parameter is which kind of signal and we got from our input from the console and we convert my in signals. So this is the function we send signal to this process ID. So next program is the receiving signal process called receiving signal dot cpp. First, we register our signal and which four signal hang up, interrupt, user one, user two, to our signal handlers. If this process received this signal, where we invoke this signal handler functions. This signal handler function is a print process received signal, signal number, and we use a switch, print out the signal short name, signal han, signal int, signal user one, and signal user two, and then print the change line. So this signal handler, we just print out which signal we received. We only handle these four signals. This 20102 is system signal, now we overwrite, so our signal handler will be handle these two signals. This two is a user defined signal, which is this program can do whatever we want. We just print out which signal what we received. Now we save our program. We compile our program. First, we send signal in the same process, which called my signal. So in this process, it's process 6871. In the same process, we just input a signal, one. So we generate signal, send to same process. So our signal handler function says we received signal, one, we just generate. If we try to input a two, which is we generate a signal two, send to this process, our signal handler says signal two, signal int received. If I set signal 10, it says signal 10, user 1 received. Signal 12, signal 12, user 2 is received. Because in our program, we, our signal handler function only capture these four type signals. If I try to send signal 9, which is uh, kill signals, which is we didn't overwrite, so system will handle this signal, so we put now, and the signal 9 is the signal kill, so system killed the process. The second example is a P-thread signal, which is we demonstrate how to send the signals to each thread. So this program, we just put a number 2, create a 2 thread, Program first, use a p-thread create to create a two thread, thread zero and thread one. And then both thread once established, thread one and thread zero is waiting for signals. In the program main program, we try to send 10 signal to thread zero, which is a signal user one, and we send the signal user two, integer 12, to the thread one. So you can see our thread one received signal 12, which is a signal user 2. My thread 0 received the signal and the signal user 1. And then we send the signal user 1 to thread 0. So this is a demonstrate how to send signal to the each thread in multi-thread program. Next example 
is a send signal from one process to another process. So we are using two terminal to demonstrate. First terminal is the top terminal. We are going to the receiving signal process. This is receiving signal process. Process number is 6915. Bottom terminal send signal process, which send to 6915. We can send a 1, 2, 10, 12 because we customized only four signals. If we send one, you can see our process received the signal one, which is signal hung up. If we send two, you can see our process received the signal two, signal int. If we send a 10, this is receiving process receiving the signal 10, signal user one. If I send 12, receiving process receiving the signal 12, signal user 2. If I send a 9, our signal handling does handle this, so the system default function will handle signal 9s, which is killing the process. So you can see our process being killed. So signal is very important, especially for the real-time application. You can use the signal to trigger event, to handle event, and it is widely used in the Unix and the Linux C++ programming. Hello, this is Hui. Thanks to watch my video. Hopefully this is useful. It's going to be great to have your feedback.